c'est bizarre. Hey guys, how are you doing? Fine, fine. Hey Jean Francis, how are you? Fine. I ch I check this uh, program. I don't know exactly how it works. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit confusing. Yeah. Uh, there's well on the left there's the stage where you see the major events that are going on now, yeah. and then under that the sessions where you can uh, the various uh, workshops. So this is one of the workshops. Huh? Okay, great. So okay. what are you uh, doing? <laughs> I will explain you. What you are an IP strategy? That's... Yeah, the, the, this session will be talking about uh, not so much the strategy, more the hands dirty tactics okay. for growth and international markets for intellectual property under various uh, uh, various uh, conditions. So the, uh, this is, uh, I think, we're starting in about five minutes, so we have a little bit of time. Okay. Um, the, let 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 me see because you're you're sharing with, what what do you think? I was thinking of putting this here. Does this look about right? No, it looks strange. No. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, it, looks, it looks very strange. I won't put it up. I know, I, I, you know, I, I I'm I'm I have a company. We do a, a lot of things around IP. Ah, okay. Yeah, and uh, and and you, what what are you doing? We we have developed a new tool. Uh, name is Patman. It's a good way to for strategy IP. Okay, very nice. I'd I'd like to learn more about that. If you can in the chat put your uh, put your company yeah. website, and I'll I'll reach out to you. I, I will... uh, so we're always very interested to see uh, these uh, new tools coming up. Yeah. I, uh... But I have a presentation for the new tool, not on the on the on the uh, website. But uh, so you will have the address. Of the way. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it will be very interesting. Let me see if what we have here. Uh, uh, this is for the event. This is for the session. Uh, we 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 oh. we develop a, a dashboard, and uh, we connect to the. Uh, to explain to people who have no knowledge on, on IP to have an overview of the situation of your patent portfolio and also yeah. to check the all the questions around the FTO. That's what we do. Okay, very interesting. I know, it's interesting. <laughs> oh, it's very interesting, I yeah. I, I, the, that kind of thing could be very okay, useful. Exactly. We're an advisory office, an intellectual property advisory office. I'll, I'll give in the beginning of the presentation, mm -hmm. I'll give a couple of slides to to explain mm -hmm. a little bit what we do and how we can help. Uh, let where, I've lost the, oh, here it is. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I have your I have your link now and I'll uh, I'll go to the website and check what mm -hmm. you're But you you have no information for the moment on, on our tool. The name is Patman, and I can make a presentation uh, later. Yeah, yeah. L let's let's hook up after yeah. this, and then we, we we can we can talk about it in more detail. Oh, great, great. And wh where are you located? Jordan. Jordan. Okay. Yeah, Jordan. We're in Amman, Jordan. But, uh, I, I'll uh, now I have. Uh, can you can you put your? Uh, let me see. Uh, there, there's a way where where you can send people and request meetings and do do one to ones on this platform. It's a little bit confusing, but it can be done. Uh, so what we can do is just uh, uh, send send me a message, okay, or just put your email in, and I'll arrange for you to have a detailed presentation, okay with my uh, intellectual property team so that okay. uh, we, we can get the details out you know and, and understand exactly. uh, what, what you're up to uh, capabilities uh, uh, of, of i will yours. send in the in the chat i will send my email address okay sounds perfect sounds really good okay i'll hook you up with my colleague muhammad Diab, who takes care of the intellectual property section yeah and and uh, let's uh, let's figure out what you're up to Hello. okay you have okay. Let me just get my jacket because it's a little bit cold in this room. <laughs> of course, none of us are in, I don't know about you, but we're not in the office. We haven't been in my office for months. So I am sharing my home office with the mice now. <laughs> 
they're getting yeah. restless. They don't want me to be here anymore. <laughs> the mice are trying to kick me out. Okay, let me close all of this to make sure that we don't have any any yeah, okay, what do we have? Sweet and da, 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 da. I'm, I'm closing a lot of windows, so I might close this window by mistake. If I close, I'll come back soon. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> Uh, thievery Corporation. Okay. Yeah. And here we have, we don't need this. Um, close. Okay, we're not going to close it. Uh, right. So, uh, should we start? I, I see we have a few participants. Um, yeah. Let's, uh, uh, what's the time? Oh, it's only just gone. Okay. I, I think that I don't see anybody else in the queue. What's the two right. Okay, and this is being recorded. And okay, it looks good. We, we can get started now. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I see people are still coming in. Um, is it is it okay if I uh, uh, if uh, if if we um, just to make sure that it stays smooth? Is it okay if I uh, uh, mute uh, your or you can mute the microphone or you can stop the share of. Uh, stop sharing the uh, the stream so that uh, we can move forward because I'm going to start presenting now, okay? Right, so, uh, first of all, I want to welcome everybody to the wonderful world of intellectual property. Mm, yeah, uh, very exciting. Uh, the uh, uh, So I'm going to do the presentation, okay? But at the same time, I also am going to keep an eye on the chat. I will try. And I will also uh, have to admit people that come in if somebody needs to be admitted. I'm, I'm, I think that's part of my job remit as the presenter of this workshop. Um, so in this workshop, uh, this is really not a legal workshop at all. So I'm sorry if, the, if, if you're looking for a lawyer to tell you this intellectual property law and that intellectual pro No, this is a hands dirty workshop, okay? This is a guerrilla tactics of intellectual property workshop. Uh, and it's useful because uh, we, we notice that a lot of uh, academics, technology transfer offices, researchers, they understand a little bit how to deal with intellectual property because most of the time, it's just one strategy for intellectual property that comes out of research. And we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, we call it deep tech intellectual property strategy based on the deep tech uh, ventures, which are based on science and technology. But beyond that, for the digital world, for startups, for capital, where does intellectual property fit in that thinking? Okay, now, uh, anybody I think can, can uh, request to share their uh, stream or voice or video or something. So I'll try to keep an eye open to make sure that I see when people request, but uh, you can help me out also. I'm, I'm, if, if somebody's in, just write in the, in the chat. I'll also try to keep uh, an eye on the chat, okay? So that if somebody has a question or something, you can put it on the chat, okay? Um, this is my first time using this technology platform. Um, uh, I, I think it's okay. It looks good so far. But uh, also, I am, I am uh, often uh, confused very easily when it comes to, uh, to technology. And I think that uh, I have too soon entered the age where my children are much better at doing this technology thing than I am. I thought it was going to be after five or six years, but clearly we are already there. So. If you don't mind, I'm going to share with you my presentation now. And the presentation uh, is, a, well, let's see, where are we going? Uh, slideshow, here we go. So I hope you can all see this, okay? And uh, let me see. I hope you can all see this. So I'm, I'm sharing a presentation. And the presentation is entitled, uh, uh, IP tactics for growth and international markets. Okay, and this this I hope will help uh, everybody uh, attending try to gain a little bit of understanding how to look at the IP question. Okay, so uh, not the details of this law and that tactic and no, but just holistically as a startup as an investor. 
what are you looking at when you're looking at intellectual property? So let me try to take us forward uh, in this presentation. First of all, I want to talk uh, a little bit about who we are so that you understand why we have that perspective. Uh, secondly, uh, I'm going to give maybe two or three slides about intellectual property, what it is, Be just to make sure that we all speak the same language. Okay, uh, I'm not going to, this is not about intellectual property, this is about tactics, but just so we know what we're talking about. I'll give you a couple of slides about intellectual property. I'll give you two or three slides about what we were surprised when we learned from industry, how they deal with intellectual property. And then for the last thing, I'll talk about just three slides, tactics that make sense for startups and SMEs, okay? Business strategy, how that links with the intellectual property, but also investment, how that links with intellectual property. So I hope that uh, this is all uh, clear. I can see that the presentation is showing nicely. So moving on. Okay, first of all, my name is Mohammed Al Jafari. I'm very pleased to meet you all. I'm Jordanian. I work with the Royal Scientific Society in Jordan, which is one of the uh, more significant uh, research and uh, uh, innovation institutions in the region. It was established in the 70s. In 2003, the Royal Scientific Society established IPARC. Uh, and IPARC is the arm of the Royal Scientific Society that is responsible for uh, supporting and enabling entrepreneurship and innovation. Okay, and we take an investment approach. IPARC manages a lot of incubators, but also has a small exotic uh, office called the Intellectual Property Commercialization Office or IPCO. This is the office that I direct. It is an advisory office and its main objective is to make sure that uh, innovators uh, gain innovation okay so the the idea that we have is what is the best way to give uh, to make sure that innovators create a return on investment have a lot of services in ipco some of them related to intellectual property commercialization and investment so quickly quickly i have to say first how we see innovation okay not this is not an academic definition and really we're not that interested in academic definitions but we see innovation as the surprising the unusual the thing that surprises even your peers in the industry and if you keep going down these roads that no one goes down eventually you will find yourself alone in the market you will have a unique market presence okay this unique market presence either by building a fantastic brand or having a great product or inventing a new way to do things this is what intellectual property kind of starts developing okay and then what this means is that uh, intellectual property is a way for you to safeguard this unique presence that you have cultivated in a market, okay? That's the basic thing. I really don't want to be very academic in this presentation, so I'll move quickly uh, on these uh, couple of slides. Intellectual property, maybe the most common, the one you're, that you're more, ava uh, more aware of is copy, uh, sorry, uh, copyrights. It's somebody sells the rights a novel then somebody owns the rights to it not you're not allowed to really copy a book and sell it because it has a copyright somebody has the right to sell that you don't have the right to sell that okay so that's copyrights it used to be that software was protected by copyright not anymore and we'll talk about that in a short while trademarks again very common easy to understand if something carries a name and people can recognize that thing by the name McDonald's, Gucci, Toyota, that's a trademark, okay? It, it, it's marked and then you know what it is and it's not allowed to infringe on somebody else's trademark. Patents protect. Inventions and an invention is a technological solution to a technical problem. So it's a device or a material or a drug or something like that. The shape just the shape is a design, is an industrial design, okay? And then, apart from all of that, 
the most important intellectual property and the one that is always forgotten is secrets. So if you don't talk about something, it's a secret. If you own it, then you own a trade secret. It's as simple as that. And trade secrets are interesting. They can be anything. They can be market know-how. So you know that your competitor is moving, that's a secret, okay? It could be that it's a patent or an invention, but you haven't registered it yet, okay? It's not filed, it's a secret. It could be that you have a plan to do something, it's a secret, okay? Secrets are very important, okay? The second thing about secrets that's interesting is that it's normally only secret for a short while and then everybody knows about it, normally. We'll talk about the shift from copyrights to secrets in software during this presentation. And this is the biggest shift in the digitization world from an intellectual property perspective. Okay, moving on, let's see. Two basic truths about intellectual property. Almost everything to do with intellectual property is two truths. Truth number one, the basic role of intellectual property, like we said, is to protect you in a market. Okay, so you innovated, you wrote a book, you drew a painting, you took a picture, you invented something. Intellectual property will give you the exclusive right to use it in a market. It's very useful. What does that mean? It means there's no competition, right? So if you have intellectual property, you can use the courts to kick the competitors out of the market legally. This is very interesting for business because it reduces the risk. However, this is not the most important role of intellectual property. The thing we forget often is that most of the time, most of the time, intellectual property developed as a means to make a partnership, not as a means to protect your way yourself in a market. For example, if a university registers a patent for a new drug that their research has discovered, the university doesn't make drugs and has no interest in making drugs, right? But the university can give this patent to somebody else who can make drugs and who can make money selling these drugs. That person will protect their position in the market through the patent that the university got. So why did the university get a patent? In order to partner. They're transferring their know-how to the industry through intellectual property and this is very interesting intellectual property is the currency of knowledge okay so uh, let's see moving on um this means that intellectual property has two roles for industry large commercial operations people who are already in the market intellectual property protects that market position for everybody else intellectual property is a way to partner okay this partnership enabling role is very important and is very, very often forgotten for startups for smes who have not got the financial muscle to enter global markets quickly intellectual property allows you to partner with larger entities and therefore you can you can uh, go into international markets nice nice this is why intellectual property is useful it's this two dual role dualism okay now i want to say a few stories these are interesting we find them interesting stories from industry so that people can appreciate how intellectual property reflects on them as institutions as startups something like that okay now the easiest way to understand the role of intellectual property is to understand deep technology how it moves forward and the most extreme way to see this is in the pharmaceutical industry extreme this is the easiest way to get an ip tactic that makes sense because pharmaceutical industry is very easy to understand now it's easy to understand why here you go pfizer they have this patent for a molecule called atorvastatin which they sell as lipitor which created 125 billion us dollars over about 15 years ridiculous amounts of money for a corporation almost a quarter of their revenue how were they able to do that i'll tell you how they were able to do that first of all we have to understand that the industry is split into two originators they create new drugs like lipitor 
genetics legally copy them. Okay, so you are either an originator or a genetic. Most of the companies in our region are genetics. Okay, originators are big players. Okay, why are they big players? Because it costs between half a billion to two billion dollars to get a drug to the market. So it's a big investment. Drugs will always eventually face generic competition. And an originator will lose up to 90% of their market share the moment they face generic competition. Why? Because generics did not pay the 500 to 2 billion mil to two, 500 million to 2 billion dollars to get the drug to the market, which means they can sell it at a much reduced cost. What does this mean? Patents are critical. Okay. Imagine to discover the cure for COVID-19. The perfect cure for COVID-19. It will still cost 500 million to get it to the market. And now we're hearing about the big testing that is done by Pfizer and that is done by all of these companies that are trying to develop a vaccine or a drug or something like that. These are big costs. If there's no patent, then when the drug gets to the market, it will face generic competition on day one or after a couple of years. This is not viable. I cannot pay so much money and then face generic competition right away. What does this mean? If you invent the perfect drug, you will never sell it. Nobody will ever invest in it. This means that having intellectual property is the way to, to at least give a drug a chance to help save people's lives. Tactic number one, if it's deep technology, you have to have a patent. You cannot live without a patent. Okay, It's, it's not the perfect way. We would like the economy to act better, We would, but this is the reality. If a drug does not have a patent, nobody will invest in it. Nobody. It's very difficult to get people to, to get investors or to get uh, anybody to get a drug to the market if it doesn't have a patent. It is a reality, very easy to reality. Okay, number two, why did Facebook pay $19 billion for a company that has 100 employees? Why was um, WhatsApp worth $19 billion? We know that it wasn't worth $19 billion because it was rich. It didn't have a lot of cash. It didn't generate a lot of cash even. So we started thinking, okay, maybe there's something hidden. There's some intellectual property. And we started thinking that, okay, so if it's worth 19 billion, maybe because it has a lot of users, maybe the users are worth 19 billion. No, it's not that. WhatsApp gave Facebook access to more data than anybody has access to because everybody uses WhatsApp and, and uh, Facebook gets to mine that data. Okay, so what Facebook bought were tools. Okay, it was a system, okay, and it was users, and but also tools to collect data. This is very important, okay? This is why uh, Facebook paid so much for, uh, well, one of the reasons why Facebook paid so much for WhatsApp. It is not that WhatsApp had the huge amount of money or, no, no. It's that WhatsApp created the tools that Facebook can utilize. This is why the valuation was so high. Okay, moving on. Another very interesting example, and this we learned a lot from the litigation between Apple and Samsung. Okay, more than 500 million US dollars awarded to Apple because Samsung lost. What did they lose? Apple had patents and they said Samsung were infringing on our patents. Not very important. Maybe they got five or 50 million or something like that. Apple said, oh, look, we're going to trademark the shape of the iPhone. This is a trademark. Of course, the, drug, the, the judge threw that out, said, no, this shape cannot be trademarked. The, the thing that sealed the deal was a design. So the judges eventually decided that Samsung copied the design, the, the shape, of the iPhone, $500 million for the shape. Now, in the past, we used to say, you know, designs are nice, but not very important. No, no, they are very important these days because we can see from this litigation that actually 
it's easy to say they are copying a design. It's much easier to say that they are infringing a patent. And it's worth a lot of money. Huh? This was a surprise to us, to be honest. We expected that the patents are more important. Here it says the designs are more important sometimes. OK, this is another example to show hidden intellectual property. So TikTok, what's the big deal with TikTok? Why are they? Why does Donald Trump want to ban it? He wants to ban it because he wants a US company to control. Why do they want the US company to control it? It's all about the algorithm, OK? Not the users, not the algorithm. So this is an even more pure case, more extreme than the WhatsApp deal, okay? Okay, it has users and traffic and all of that, but the algorithm is the, is the valuable component. And this is why China decided to ban exports of intellectual property assets, including artificial intelligence. Huh? This is very interesting, really, because it shows that but it has the intelligence within, and this intelligence is worth a lot of money. Okay, now, another example is Google. How did Stanford own 20% of Google? They own 20% of Google against the algorithms and the code. So, huh, here you go. Suddenly, there's value for code. There's value for algorithms. The thing to notice is that code and everything in application, they shifted from the 1995, Windows 95 model of having a CD with a copyright on it. Nobody does that anymore. Suddenly they are all secrets and they look like the legendary Coca-Cola formula. Ah, Coca-Cola formula is a secret. No, but of course everybody knows it, but the rhetoric is that it's a secret. Nobody knows it, it's a trade secret. Code, Source code are now trade secrets, not um, not normally patented or copywritten or anything. They are secrets, okay? This is a very important shift in the tactics. And here we get to the last two or three slides on the last few minutes of the presentation. And in these three slides, I'm going to talk about a little bit of basic tactics, okay? For deep tech, we said about this. You have to, if you are in engineering or science and you're developing something and you're looking for a partner, you have to plan your transition from secret to patent. This is a very important plan. You also have to plan your partnerships and your financial capabilities so that your patent costs will go up, your partnership strength will go up ahead of it. That means when you have to pay $100,000 for five lawyers to take patenting in seven countries, you have the money or your partner has the money. This is the important thing. The costs will go up. Your partnerships has to go up in line. Okay. Now, that's the first bit of tactics. The second tactics for the digital world is it is hidden. It's normally trademarks, something like that. But code and everything on the server side is hidden. We don't share that. Okay. And that means you probably want your coders to be your co-founders. You want to hide them into the company. You want them to be with you. You don't want them to take the code and disappear because somebody else is copying your code. It's very, key, very difficult to find it. Okay. And also, you have to make sure that when you're innovating, you're not just having fantastic code. You have a fantastic business plan to capture the market because code alone doesn't do much. Huh? Uh, the last bit of tactics that I want to talk about relates to capital calls, okay? Intellectual property realistically gives investors a nice warm feeling. They like property. They enjoy it. Whether or not it's justifiable is beside the point. They like to ask the question, what is your intellectual property, even though they, maybe they don't understand it. Be very careful of somebody that says, do you have a patent on that? Patents are very often not useful. However, it's important to have them as part of your intellectual property. It's more important to treat your intellectual property holistically. So part of it's uh, trademark, but the important thing, the engine that drives your revenue is hidden. Code, algorithm, uh, patent, new molecular entity, new material, something like that. The last bit of advice that I have is to reflect your intellectual property on your balance sheet. What does that mean? For example, if I'm spending money on a project that is ongoing, okay, 
I can go and take that project, the, take that money, and capitalize it on my balance sheet by saying, okay, this money I paid a salary for a coder for six months, it's an asset, it's not an expense. This reduces your expenses and it expands your balance sheet. These finance tactics are important. And my advice to everybody is get help doing this and do not get help from lawyers doing this because lawyers will tell you the truth, but it is not necessarily the truth that you want to hear. So uh, this, is, this has been the presentation. I hope that uh, you enjoyed it. And uh, right now, uh, what do we do? Right now, uh, let's look at the chat. If anybody has a question, you can put it on the chat. Uh, if, if you'd like to, uh, uh, let me unshare. If you'd like to uh, come up and say something, or if you have some comments to do, you, you are welcome to do, you are welcoming to do this. So uh, it's, uh, the, the floor is open for any questions. I am the chat, as you can see, I'm not very good at this. I'm looking at the chat now. Oh, thank you, Rafael. Good to see you. So if anybody has a question, you can either put them on the chat or you can request to come and share your stream and then we can talk to you directly. Anybody would like to uh, uh, comment? How about you, Zoe? Good to see you. You want to come share your, uh, I don't know how to do this, but would you like to share your uh, 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 thoughts or uh, anybody? okay so we have a question what ip what what uh, and we have another question how can who can help ex can help get some advisors to be honest get get advice from people who are used to investing in science and technology okay so i'll answer this question first and first and then i'll talk about uh, about sas so uh uh in terms Try to find, uh, try to find uh, um, investors or startups who have taken the road that you want to go down, who have made the mistakes that you'd like to avoid, and who have learned how to do it. In these kind of things, in the absence of advisors or consultants like us, if you don't have access to advisors, try to find either investors or entrepreneurs to move forward. And and the SaaS question. Is, is a very interesting one to, to look at. Uh, the SaaS question, software as a service. Now, intellectual property is always there, okay? But if, say, for example, you are doing something like Google Maps, for example, okay? The maps themselves are intellectual property, and you can say that nobody's allowed to copy my maps. And you can register them all as intellectual property. And you're not worried about that because maps are on the public side. People can see them. So you can trademark anything or you can, sorry, you can uh, copyright anything that people can see. This is the easy part. Everything behind the facade of the uh, application is hidden or even the software. The software itself, if it's a CD that you give to people and they can copy it, okay, maybe you have to do a copyright on it. If it's on the server side, if it's software as a service, then it's hidden. I, I am telling you this very importantly because it is very common to hear that you can take a copyright on your code and then nobody's allowed to copy it. Yes, nobody's allowed to copy it, but if somebody else copies it, you will not find out. So this is why Treat it holistically. Intellectual property is not just the the light, the the shahadat, the certificates you get from the government for having something protected by intellectual property. A lot of intellectual property is secret that you own, that nobody can can contest that you own, but that you do not broadcast. Okay, like the Google code. Okay, so Google is software as a service of some sort because it gives you the service of searching and it's somehow software-ish. So you, you type Google, you, you go and you type your name and it gives you what, whatever sordid history you have about yourself, but you do not know what's behind this, uh, this method. Okay, so this is something very important. You have to be very careful, especially with software as a service. Please keep it uh, tight and confidential. How about this? Any other questions? Does this answer? 
Rafqa Abu Salim. My name is Abu Salim, by the way, because my son is Salim. So Rafqa, I hope this answers your question. Uh, and uh, really, uh, check check us out. Uh, I'll put my email uh, address here so that uh, if anybody has any question or wants uh, advice, well, to be honest, we're a uh, non-for-profit, so we normally do a lot of work that makes us very poor in the long run, like answering questions for free. But we ask us a question, we'll probably answer it. This is this is my uh, email address. Uh, any any other questions you have? Ah, what is the average IP budget for tech companies willing to expand regional? This is a very good question. So, and another question: How do you manage IP strategy for startups going international? Uh, well, first of all, if you're going regional with your with if you're going regional with your market your intellectual property cost shouldn't be too large. The problem is, if you intend to go global in the future, then you might have to be very careful now to have your intellectual property cost cover that. And for that, the tactic that we spoke about is that you grow your partnerships as you grow your IP costs, okay? But regional, you probably need something to add into your budget, something like twenty or thirty thousand dollars, in order to make sure that you have good protection of your brand, okay, of your of your trademarks overseas. It's not normally a big deal, but it makes a difference because you you don't want to show up at a market and discover that some other idiot has taken your brand name and is selling the same product with the exact same brand name. And then you have to prove that you were fair. You don't want to go into that litigation. So it's probably the most important component there is brand names. Copyrights is not an issue, very cheap, and you only do it once. Patents, regionally, regional expansion, patents are not normally an issue. But if they are, it'll be about the same budget, OK? Um, I would say that the average budget for a tech company wants to expand regionally is normally reliant on their uh, legal costs, I mean, normally reliant on their trademarks. And that's maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 should cover everything for multiple years, OK? So another question, how to manage IP strategy for startups going international depends on your company. If it's science and engineering, then the easy way is to submit for a PCT filing, which gives you 30 months before the costs suddenly uh, start going very steep. Okay, so in this period, the 30 months, you need to cultivate enough market or enough partnerships or enough capital in order to justify this type of investment. So this is for patents. For everything else, your IP strategy should be two components first of all making sure that it is visible and nice and gives investors a nice feeling on your business plan okay secondly maybe more important okay reflect your intellectual property on your balance sheet and and the modern accounting standards allow that so whatever you pay for your development is an asset it's not an expense this is a little bit accounting the difference is say i at the end of the year i pay a thousand dollars for uh, for example either to register uh, my trademarks or for example to uh, better to develop a, a software okay so i'm developing a software it costs me one thousand dollars that i have to pay for a coder the coder will send me an invoice i will pay him a thousand dollars okay this $1,000 could either be a loss, an expense that, that makes your profit less or probably makes your loss more, okay? You're losing more money. Or you can say that this is part of my intellectual property development and I'm going to put it on my balance sheet and either amortize it over 10 years or have a justification not to start amortizing now because it's not it's not uh, amortizing the, everything is hidden it's uh, this is part of my intellectual property this way when you had cash and you paid 1000 it's as if you bought an asset it's on your balance sheet it's not an expense so those are the two things that you have to do as a startup 
Okay, can a product that is commonly used, for example, shoes, oh, I lost the chat. Can a product that is commonly used, for example, shoes, be patented for being made in a certain way or in a fab certain fabric? You just said three patents. See, this is not one patent, these are three. If it's made in a certain way, if it's a production process that is innovative, then it's patentable because it's an innovative production process. If it's a new fabric, okay, then the fabric alone, as a fabric is a patent because you invented a new material or a new fabric, okay? If it's a fabric inside a shoe, this is the difficult one because say, for example, the fabric is known, but it's never used in shoes. If that is surprising that it is used in shoes, okay? So it is like your peers in the industry will look at the shoe and go, whoa, I would never imagine using this fabric for, uh, foot for footwear. Uh, okay, uh, also a patent, but this results from taking two things that are known and combining them together. This is borderline, and you have to argue whether or not it is innovative. If it's really surprising, very strange, then it would be innovative. So three patents, one for if it's a way to produce shoes, one for if it's a new fabric, and one for if it's the first time that this particular fabric is lost in this shoe. So. Yeah, we have to do a lot of work when we feel free to email me this question with a little bit more details and we can do a search for you and see if it's actually patentable or not. My gut feeling is there's a 50-50 chance. Any other questions? What what did I did I miss any questions? Let's see. I think we covered everything. So um if there are no more questions, uh, I will thank you all for attending. Um uh, I hope you had as much fun as I did uh, uh, at attending this. And uh, like I said, I have my email in the chat box. Uh, feel free to email me. Oh, there's another question. Feel free to email me any question you like. We will probably answer. Do you think that IP protects us really? Ah, very good question. Depends. For you, if you're not Pfizer, then no. You're, you're, you're not protected really by IP in the patent sense. Trademarks, yes, you get protection. Copyrights, yes, you get protection. The, the legal system in our countries is used to copyrights and they're used to trademarks. That's easy. Patents, they're not used to it. I have to be honest. There's very poor litigation in patents. However, I will remind you why you get intellectual property. Other than secrets, which of course are protected because you're not silly and you're not going to tell anybody your secret, and you're going to put your coders on your board so that they're gaining with you. Patents, you're not, you're probably not getting a patent because you want to protect. You are getting a patent because you want to partner. So your question should be, does patent protect our partners? Yeah, they do. If they are strong enough, then they have lawyers, then they, are, they will be protected. So we have a question. What about method patents? Ah, method patents are not patents, really. Um, I'll tell you what. I, this is not fair. Method patents have two types. Either they are business method or they are industry method, industry method. Okay. If it's industry, then it's probably okay. You might get a patent. If it's a software patent, then even the United States, which used to be the only country that allowed software patents and business method patents, are not allowing it anymore because we have the Alice case and a Supreme Court ruling in 2014, and we're really not doing any software patents at all. Having said that, we were surprised recently by, oh, we learned a lot because we do a lot of mistakes. Uh, somebody came to us with an encryption method, and we said, okay, listen, this is a software. And we don't, we really don't think that it's going to be patentable, but it gained a patent. So, normally no, but nobody knows to be honest. The, the question that we have is, if it's software, if, if method means algorithm inside software, okay, for example, how do you know if somebody copies it? If it's on the server side and it's all done behind closed doors, you will never know. So software patents might be a thing, even if you get like this encryption method, okay? So even if the patent is granted and it is granted in the United States, 
surprisingly. If somebody takes it and copies it, how do you know? You, you will never know. So this is this is one of the things that you have to be aware of in, in method patents. What kind of method is it? And if it's a software, is it really worth patenting? You know, publishing your method for everybody to see? Not always. Okay. So any other questions? Are we done? Can, can I go drink my tea now? It's good to see all of our colleagues from Be from uh, Beritech, uh, and it's good to see all of our colleagues from Anima, and I'm very happy to have received you all in this presentation. Thank you so much. And uh, please email me if you want anything. Look me up on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm very lazy on social media, so don't try to poke me or anything. And if you send me an email, shout many times because I will probably miss it as Zoe very well knows. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Emmanuel. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. استنى شوي بدنا نسكر يا بابا